In this video, I'm going to discuss the condition states for pre-stressed concrete. And this, this includes um, namely pre-stressed box beams is, is mostly what I'm going to be talking about. But the guide can be used for your ash toe beams, your pre-stressed eyes, and even your post-tensioned concrete. And pre-stressed concrete, as you know, is different from regularly reinforced concrete. The, the reinforcement um, in reinforced concrete is not pre-stressed. Uh, uh, pre-stressing strands. The pre-stressing strands are, are different steel and, and basically you take um, pre-stressing strands and string them tight and then cast the concrete around it and then release the strands and the whole box, the whole cross section uh, fr from bearing to bearing th through the whole span is, is in compression. And so it, it behaves differently therefore we have different guidance. So th this is just a, a cross section of a, a pre-stressed box beam with a void and you notice the blue crosses indicating the pre-stressed strands and the cross section. And, and these pre-stressing strands are, are seven wires wound around, six wires wound around one, one wire. And, and you can see how they're embedded inside this concrete. And it's very important that we keep these strands protected because they're doing a lot of the heavy lifting. One of the, one of the tables within the manual bridge inspection is table 74, and it's the guidance for uh, pre-stressed concrete. And when we start talking about exposed strands, because that's the, the deficiency that's controlling most of our most of our poor uh, pre-stressed box beams, exposed pre-stressing is, is not just those that are visible to the naked eye for the inspector. It, it's including those strands that are not visible, but there's indications that the corros corrosive process has begun. So exposed pre-stressing um, includes those that are above a longitudinal crack, and that longitudinal crack would be located in the bottom uh, bottom flange of the box, above a delamination, above a spall with unsound or even saturated concrete, and consideration should also be given to the strands neighboring and above a corroded stirrup. So, so there's four ways that you could you could uh, say that a strand is exposed. But it, we really mean exposure to uh, chlorides, expo exposure to the, um, the corros corrosive process. So moving forward, that's what exposed pre-stressing means. And, and here's our chart, um, our normal you know, condition state chart moving left to right. You've got your good, fair, poor, and severe. And I've bolded condition state three because that's where I'm gonna begin talking about our defects. And by and large, as with most um, materials, the condition state three, if, if there's distress, condition state three is the, the best place to start for your quantities. And then we'll determine, you know, how it should scatter. Should it scatter to the good? Should it remain in three or should it scatter to the severe? So the first, first one we'll talk about is the exposed strands. And this is, uh, pretty common once, once the, uh, moisture starts, uh, wicking through and getting into uh, between the adjacent boxes through the shear keys and the corrosive process can then begin with that chloride and this this image is is a photo taken down the keyway on the underside of pre-stressed box beam bridge and um, there's two beams here one on the left one on the right and each each of these beams have exposed strands so um, when we t start talking about linear foot it's the linear foot of the beam so each linear foot quantity goes into one of the condition states and if there's exposed strands plural you know you got you got multiple strands a good place to start with condition state three the guidance in the manual says up to a quarter of the beam width if you've got uh, exposed strands and that, that again that would be delamination spall or even visible strands if there's more than a quarter Uh, condition state four, um, inspectors are encouraged to put the, those linear feet into condition state four. And, and even if you have one linear foot or 400 linear foot in condition state four, that, that is a quantity that needs to have a structural review. And that structural review can uh, indicate that there's no impact to capacity. So there is a possibility for that quantity that was put into four to move back to three. And that has to happen before the uh, report is, is finalized or the report is approved by the reviewers. The reviewer is responsible for taking that 
and doing a structural analysis or giving it to central office or someone else. Here's a case in point, nice new wearing surface on top, three span adjacent pre-stress box beam bridge. And as we look underside, it, there's, a, there's a different story on the underside. You can see we have some pre-stress box beams with exposed strands. And anytime you see exposed strands, a good place to start is condition state three. And they're by and large gonna stay in condition state three. So here's, here's some other locations of uh, exposed. And even if we see them hanging down, like in this example, if, if they're visible, we treat them all as exposed, as, as not, doing, not doing the heavy lifting. That was span two, the middle span. This is span one. Span one had the worst or more exposure. And you can see that there's a lot of exposure. And the, the red box here is indicating that these are portions with more than a quarter um, of the cross section of the linear foot. Each the linear foot moving along the beam line would be placed in condition state four. Here's portions that would be um, that would probably remain in condition state three. And again, any there could be one linear foot in condition state four. That means there's going to be a structural review or, or analysis. So, and it just so happens this this structure was um, was closed uh, shortly after this this inspection. So moving along to the second uh, defect is efflorescence, and efflorescence we typically see spilling through the uh, keyway where the moisture is, is um, active. And if you see rust staining anywhere in the pre-stressed beam, uh, rust staining will, will, will go to condition state three. So rust staining certainly, and if you have built up of efflorescence, condition state three as well. Um, active moisture, this uh, with the rust staining, this would uh, be condition state three. And, and um, if it continues to be active, we, we would see this progress pretty aggressively um, within the next three to five years. We'd see those strands open up significantly. Light efflorescence would be state two. And something light would be, you know, there's evidence that it's there. There's um, no buildup of efflorescence, but, but there is um, evidence of moisture between the keyway. And you're going to discount both, both, both beams. So the linear foot is, is times two, so to speak. So the linear foot of the beam on the left is condition state two. And the linear feet, of the beam on the right is condition state two for these adjacent box beams, both. So here's, here's the same example with the active leakage. And three years later, you could see the strand exposure. And, and within three years, there was an impact to capacity. We had to post this bridge. Uh, because we inspect every year, we were able to monitor it, and it wasn't a safety concern. But, but nonetheless, this is showing you that that th these can um, the corrosive process can escalate once those keyways are open. Cracking, well, we tolerate less cracking for pre-stressed concrete. You can see the dimensions pretty uh, small. Cracking uh, wider than 0 0.009 inches is going to go into condition state three, and uh, not the only, but certainly one of the best ways to objectively track cracking, whether it's growing or not through the seasons, is, is a crack gauge that you can adhere to either side of the crack and watch as it moves um, two-dimensionally. Cracking can be state two, and um, thinking of, uh, you know, you can only see the, the web face of the exterior beams, but, but uh, sh uh, sheer cracking or, or cracking, structural cracking, less than 0 0.009 um, would be state two and then state one would also there could also be cracking in state one now if you have depending on its location and whether or not that crack is working so it could be flexure or actively shearing or even some sort of torsion torsion or racking or something like that uh, consideration should be should be made for condition state four and then again analysis could prove otherwise within that 90-day period. Movement is, is a significant deficiency. We often see the independent movement movement between beams where the shear, shear keys uh, fail. And analysis can, can prove if there's significant movement, um, if there's active movement, say the inspector stays underneath the bridge for, for truck traffic and they're able to, to measure sort of active uh, consideration for state four for that quantity and again an analysis could prove otherwise 
So here's evidence of movement. This, this evidence of movement would, would be um, uh, placed into the beam uh, girder linear foot. And this would be evidence of movement. Obviously, you got the, the shear keys above the shear keys, cracked longitudinally, full full length of the structure, and there's there's independent beam, beam movement happening here. And and by and large, the movement is going to be an indicator of of a poor um, superstructure underneath for these types of superstructures. So the the top side. You would see you would, your wearing surface would be rated low because of that longitudinal crack, and that wearing surface would be a square foot, square footage. So each square foot would have its condition state. And on the underside, the beams girders uh, for this pre-stressed would be a linear foot. So a linear foot of exposed strands would be the it looks like the controlling deficiency here. And while we st while we stay on this topic of of uh, top versus bottom, the um, the field report has an item for uh, floor and slab and beams and girders. So there's a deck item, a structural deck item that we rate, and a structural superstructure item that we rate. What I've talked about here is the beams, girders, the linear foot. So each linear foot gets its condition state. And historically, what we've always asked inspectors to do is on the BRD6 is to rate item 1 and 10 the same, rate item the floor and the beams, girder, slab the same. Um, you'll notice that the units are now different because element level is, is forcing these units to separate and the slab is a square footage and the beam skirters is a linear foot. So what we're asking inspectors to do is to rate um, these adjacent pre-stressed box beams uh, for linear foot and square foot. So you'll see um, you'll see uh, a difference, a difference and um, it, it won't be significant. And what you will notice by doing that, that the transition rating, that, that bold box on the far right hand side within these red, red boxes, that bold box will be, uh, they'll be similar. When you do condition rating inspections, now that's not the purpose of this video, but it, when you do condition rating inspections, you'll still leave that floor slab and the beam skirters the same rating. So if you give it a one, uh, you would give the beam skirters a one. If you give the floor slab a two, you give the beam skirters a two. So we'll, we're going to still keep that policy, but there's, there's going to be a little bit of a separation when we have two different units here.